Hello, welcome to Good Morning Dopey. Another uh, another day, another daily reflection. My name is Dave. I'm here with Howie, who is less less enshawled today. Anything to say, Howie? Uh, I always have to get my camera right whenever. It turns Do you have to face. make that? You made this sad face. I have to make. Did you see the sad face you made? You went. Yeah, that's a sad face. Oh, I thought you were just saying I have to make. Do you have to make? <laughs> um, did anyone ever say that to you in your life, Howie? Yes, my wife says that all the time. Does she? No. Does anyone say she that to you? If I have to make a pish. No, she doesn't. Pish. No, she doesn't say that. She does. Um all right, well, today's she doesn't. She does. Can you what? She does. What does she say? You have to make a pish. No, she yells at me for waking up in the middle of the night to pish. She yells at you to Not do yells it. Yells at me, but you know, I w- it wakes her up. How often and do you dogs get up? How often do you urinate in the night? Be if honest. I do, it's once. That's it. Yeah, it's not multiple times. I'm I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm not a cat. I'm in trouble. What does that mean? It means like my health is deteriorating. Yes. How many times are you getting up <laughs> in the middle of the night to pish? At least twice. Oh, well, why is that so different than once? Once is really solid. Twice is bad. Sometimes. Well, at a certain point, I think they say like over forty, your prostate enlarges, and that's that's a a cause of that. Well, you're over forty. You always, saying, you always act like you're not 40. No, no, no. But I'm saying that that is a contributing factor. So, so you're not, more urination. Yes. To wait to waking up at night. It's not like you can't hold your bladder. At it's, least there's pretty nights. Yeah. Listen, um, I'm concerned about my health. I haven't been to the you doctor should. in six years. Six years. Why don't you go to the doctor? You don't go to a general practitioner? No. Why? I, I, I don't know. What kind of person doesn't go to a doctor? I don't know. Go to the doctor. The funny thing is that six years ago, when I wasn't sober, Mm -hmm. I would go. Just because I was a little worried, whatever, I want to make sure everything. And were you honest with the doctor? Yeah. So the doctor is like, does the doctor ever ask, like, are you using, I guess, why would a doctor ask that? No, they they say, do you drink, do you smoke? And you're like. And I say, well, (laughs) I. You're like, hold my beer. (laughs) No, no, I say, I don't drink, but I smoke cigarettes every day and I smoke weed every day. And heroin. No, I never, please. I smoked heroin like twice in my life. Oh. Oh, so they're not. Yeah, but they're, they're not like. Do you shoot heroin? They're yeah, not. But the I mean, doctor isn't doesn't that kind ask of that. Like part of the. When I went to the doctor, I hadn't done heroin in years, and I said I was oh. a heroin addict, but I haven't done heroin in years. But I still smoke weed every day, and I take benzos occasionally, and I smoke cigarettes every day. Right, and then the doctor said you you're in do good that. shape considering. Actually, oh. he said that my six you. years ago my cholesterol was way too high, mm-hmm. my sugar was a little bit too high. Mm-hmm. He was concerned about my thyroid, mm-hmm. and I went to a urologist. And this pishing, no one ever said pish. I've been around Jewish people my whole life. I only hear Howard Stern saying it. Yeah, and you. Um, that's where I get it. From. That's where you, I knew that's where you got it. From. Well, it's Yiddish. I know, Go but no, did did your did anyone in your family say pish? Or just Howard? No, I. My grandmother says pish. Yeah. You sure? She said she's pish. still alive. No, you're wrong. She never said it. You're lying. <laughs> Dude. All right, enough of this. The point is, what did this I went to, to do with you going to the doctor. I went to the oh. urologist. Yeah, they checked my thyroid. Okay. And Chris, I, I was the. La- I mean, this is funny because I was when we were making the show with Chris, mm-hmm. and Chris was telling me how I should have asked for the thyroid medication because I would have lost so much weight. That the thyroid medication like speeds up your metabolism oh. and you get skinny and like, and I and I remember that we were we'd make jokes about it because I should have taken the medicine and gotten really skinny. Right. So maybe I'll go back and get the skinny thyroid medicine. Anything now. to be on drugs. Anything to <laughs> anything. Maybe All I'll right. go back and yeah. get another drug. Yeah, maybe I'll get a script for something yeah, else. That's what you All need. Right. Uh, a rallying point. Today is February sixth. Therefore, step two is the rallying point. By the way, we're wasting all sorts of good material on Good Morning Dopey. Mm. This shit is gold, and we're putting in this dumb daily I reflection show. I have show. a feeling we'll find it again. I don't think so. Yeah. It's not how it goes. Anyway, you guys, check it out. Leave a comment. What the fuck? They like it when I read the comments. Why don't we do this? What do you have on your screen right now? You. What else? Can you read a comment? Um, How hard would it be? Uh, I'm going to read this thing. You it's find the hard. comments. You read a comment. I, I can't. Can. I'm reading this fucking book. All right, you do that. I won't pay attention. I'll read a comment. Perfect. Therefore, step two is the rallying point for all of us. Whether agnostic, atheist, or former believer, 
we can stand together on this step. See, this is nice. I feel that God, that AA is a God-inspired program and that God is at every AA meeting. He was at mine today. I see, believe, and have come to know that AA works because I have stayed sober today. I'm turning my life over to AA and to God by going to an AA meeting. If God is in my heart and everyone else is, then I am a small part of a whole and I am not unique. That's nice. If God is in my heart and he speaks to me through all other people, then I must be a channel of God to other people. I should seek to do his will by living spiritual principles, and my reward will be sanity and emotional sobriety. I think this is very nice. Did you listen to that? No. This is very nice. and um, But this is where people get twisted up with this program and all this stuff. I think people get really fucking scared when they hear the word God. I think I feel crazy when I talk about God. But, um, I mean, I was talking to someone the other day about this new dopey foundation and what we're going to do. And they were like, well, can you recommend a not religious program? And I was like, you know, AA is not a particularly religious program. It's just a God-inspired program. And um, just to break it down for a second, Howie, what are you looking at? You. Good. So just to break it down, like the idea that God is everything means that God is in with all of us, which means we are all the same. I like that. But the, the bigger point, whether agnostic, atheist, or former believer, we can stand together on this step because a power greater than yourself, we've said this before, the most important aspect of it is that you are not it. You get that? Yes. That there's something more powerful than you. Right. If you're an atheist or you're an agnostic or a former believer. Are you yelling you, at me? Yes. Oh, you don't sorry. need to be like, Jesus is my savior. Right. You know, Yahweh is the way. Sure. Muhammad is the man and Buddha is the guy. You're just saying like, the ocean's bigger than me. Sure. This car is bigger than me. I'm not it. Right. So like. Makes sense. Anyway. Is that a, is that a way of saying uh, the world doesn't revolve around you? Yes. Because it's interesting that I'm seeing a lot of parallels to the way you deal, the way a parent would deal with a child in, in instilling in a child, the world doesn't revolve around you, right? Like you, you're constantly telling children the world doesn't, re- you know, they think sort of the, they're, they're, you're the center they're, of the universe. Right. And it's a very kind of childlike mentality. Yeah. Big time. Well, that's the whole thing. I mean, it's like being an addict or an alcoholic is being an overgrown child, you know, it's like, it's like Chris is one of Chris's great lines. And I don't know if he came up with it, but it's like, you're, 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 you're the piece of shit that is also the center of the universe. Like, so you're the greatest thing in the world, but you're also the worst thing in the world. And, um, and you don't see that. Well, you kind of feel it. Cause like you want to be the center of the universe and then you're like, but I'm the worst person there is. And then you have those thoughts in your head that say, I suck. I'm no good. It's just, it's all... That's productive. But I'm the most important, but I'm no good. It's this I, I horrible better. duality it is a, between... It's definitely a childlike mentality to go through life and not be able to see the forest through the trees. I think that is... Um, That's interesting. But There's that, like an immaturity to it. The whole thing, like the I, the whole thing, like like it, this childlike state, when you add drugs or alcohol, mm-hmm. this is what you get. You know, like a childlike personality who is not using drugs or alcohol, they tend to not be as harmful or as toxic or as, you know, like miserable. This -hmm. is what happens when you add one of these mind or mood altering substances that happens to be incredibly addictive to a a child child. or a child or a childlike personality or somebody who's incredibly immature because most addicts and alcoholics until they get into some kind of recovery are classically immature. Immature. Now, do you have a comment or you want to just save it? Let's save it for the next one. Yeah, that's That's enough. All All right. right. You guys leave a comment. Tell us what you think. Are you classically immature? Is Howie? People love you, Howie, by the way. Lots Mm. of good comments about Howie. I don't know why. I'm very jealous. Stay strong, Dopey Nation, and fucking toodles for Chris. Ruby, I'm face down on the floor. Ruby.